Hey guys, it's Holly, aka Pot of Mini Fig Pals, and today we're having a big pajama party because you know what happens at pajama parties? You ask each other questions. Thank you, thank you. I know, I'm a genius, I'm a genius. Creativity just like oozes in my veins. It's brilliant. The funny part is I'm not even in my pajamas, I'm just in track pants, but you know what? It's close enough. I've stolen my sister's blanket, so let's go. So just over a week ago, I asked you guys if you had any questions, just let me know. It could literally be about anything, and I just asked you basically, write it in the comments below, and oh my god, did you guys deliver? There were so many comments, thank you so much. I did not expect that many. And we're just gonna go through and answer them. It's gonna be really chill, really relaxed. You guys can get to know me. Like I said, we're having a pajama a party get comfortable sit down grab a snack make a drink I've got a hot tea I'm like ready to go Alan I've never seen Alan spelt like that Alan. Bruce wants to know what camera and mic do you use so what I'm filming on right now is my Canon 700d I bought this camera in 2016 just before I went on a trip to America because I wanted to take some cool photos one of the main reasons I bought it is because it's got a flip out screen so I can look at myself like this yeah you see me doing that a lot because because mainly I want to make sure that I'm in focus, but two, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to train yourself just to look into a camera lens. Yeah. And then eventually I upgraded my setup and bought a Rode VideoMic Pro. Ideally though, I don't want to use this Canon camera forever as last year I upgraded to my big boy, the Sony Alpha 7 III. This camera is very expensive. It cost me an arm and a leg which like really hurt, but it's worth it. It's really good. And the reason I bought it is because it's a 4K camera that shoots raw. And basically what raw means is it has like a lot of data and information. So when you put it into a software like Lightroom, you can really play around with it. There is so much data in the file. So instead I take all of my Instagram photos on this because they look gorgeous and I can go from really far away and because it's 4K, I can just crop in and the picture still looks really crisp. I love this thing to pieces. I ideally would love to use it for my live streams and things like that. And But I just need to get another lens for it really. The Unknown Brick wants to know what are my top three minifigures that I own? Own and why and greetings from California. Why thank you California. I know well I mean technically thank you unknown brick. This one's a hard one as I'm always getting like new minifigures but also my opinions always change. So I had a look at like all of my minifigures or at least most of my minifigures and I picked out three and they are the Spider-Man Homecoming Tom Holland Spider-Man suit, Captain Hook from the Disney CMF series and the Intergalactic Girl from series six or seven from the CMF series, I think. Spider-Man I chose because I feel like he's so accurate and like I love Tom Holland's Spider-Man. He's definitely my favorite and this figure looks amazing too. You've got arm printing, dual molded legs, amazing printing on the torso and legs and head and all that. Captain Hook I chose because I love Peter Pan and his hair hat combo looks so good. I also love the way they did his face print and his torso print, even though it's very basic, it looks exactly like the cartoon. And the intergalactic girl, I just think, is really cool. You don't really see too many pink space rangers with like long blonde hair. Like it reminds me of myself, but also I love her pink space suit. Goofy Brick wants to know how I got started on my channel and what is my channel's story? So I started my YouTube channel in 2011. I think it was April to be exact. And I had a bunch of like little Lego minifigures and my dad was away on a business trip. So I sat down at his desk and like made a backdrop using all of the leaflets from the CMF series. And I basically just did reviews on the CMF series that I had. At the time, I was watching a lot of like The Brick Show and Night Shroud 99, like, the occasional Brick Queen video. And I just loved watching all this content. And I thought to myself, you know what? like. I want to make that too. So I grabbed my iPod Touch and I would just film them off there. I would upload them off the default YouTube app that the iPods used to have. And then I stopped and I came back this year. And what made me come back was the Harry Potter sets, basically. I knew they were coming out. I've been buying them for the last three years, every single time they come out. And I knew that America wasn't going to be getting them, at least at the time, it was July. Every time a new Harry Potter set would come out, I would like frantically search YouTube every single day and like Instagram to see if anyone got it. I wanted to have a look at the sets. I wanted to watch reviews and things like that. So I thought if I'm getting these sets before a lot of people, why don't I make a review just in case someone wants to listen to my thoughts, if someone wants to see it, you never know. And then I was really enjoying it. So I just 
kept going. I accidentally fell into daily uploads and then we ended up here. So the next two questions kind of go hand in hand and it is what is it like being a growing girl YouTuber in the Lego community and do you experience any kind of judgment or different treatment based on your gender? And the short answer to that is yes. People aren't used to seeing girls openly talk about loving Lego and collecting Lego besides things like Lego Friends and Lego Disney. There aren't too many people on YouTube especially that openly talk about it. Like growing up all I can remember is the Brick Queen and like this siblings YouTube channel but they've since deleted all their videos. So I definitely think it's very shocking to people and while most people are really like welcoming and really nice and really kind there are a few people that take it a bit too far and I can guarantee you some of the comments and DMs I receive you would not get if you were a male YouTuber. I'm just gonna come out and say it. That being said would I want to change anything? No. I think it's important to have more females and more girls talking about their love for Lego because there are quite a lot of people out there. Like one person I found is Cafe Con Lego CC. I love her videos. It's so awesome to have another girl talking about all of these themes that I also enjoy and like making videos and reviews. There's also Lego for Ego on TikTok. I love her videos and her Star Wars collection is amazing. There was also some young girls on the Australian Lego Masters recently and it's so good to see people like that because it makes me really excited because I'm like okay cool I'm not the only one. I cannot even pronounce that name but they ask what Lego set convinced you to come out of your dark age. So my dark age was really weird. I don't think there was actually a year where I stopped buying Lego but there was a period of like a good for maybe six years where I didn't buy much at all. It was just the odd CMF here or like the dimensions packs or things like that. I didn't buy too many full sets besides the Scooby-Doo castle and the mystery machine. It was equally the original Harry Potter CMF series in the Great Hall. They kind of both came out at the same time. I didn't originally plan on buying the Great Hall, but I just knew I couldn't pass it up. And then a year after that, all the 2019 stuff came out and that's when I kind of went back and bought the rest of the 2018 wave. Yeah, it's down spiraled since then. John W. Bricks wants to know what my first First Lego set is. So in my YouTube description it says it's the 2007 Hogwarts Castle and that's technically my first proper Lego set but before that my oldest Lego set dates back to 2003 and it was like a click it's like wash bag or laundry bag not laundry bag makeup bag type thing. My sister and I had a few of them and I didn't even know it was Lego until like I think it was three years ago. I think I would have been like three or four at the time and like I loved playing with those things. Click it's was really good Good. Like, honestly, I think it's better than dots. Not that I've tried dots, but just looking at dots, I can tell that Clickets is better than dots. Francisco wants to know why my Harry Potter casting call from seven years ago was cancelled. I knew I was gonna get this question eventually. Basically, I wanted to make the entire Prisoner of Azkaban in Lego form, but I soon realized after putting that video up and getting people interested, that there was no way I was going to be able to do it the way I wanted to because I just didn't have the pieces. I was missing things like Buckbeak and Sirius Black and the Monster Book of Monsters and Draco. I only had such a small amount of figures and castles and bricks and things like that. I wouldn't have been able to pull it off. Panda Fan Cole says, do you have any problems in school being your age? and liking Lego because I do and have some people teasing me. Firstly, Panda Fan Cole, I'm very sorry to hear that. And that's something really hard to deal with because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter that you like Lego. It's what you enjoy and you shouldn't have people trying to stop you from liking that. But I do relate to you in some regard. Technically, no, I didn't have any problems when I was in school to do with that. But at the same time, I kind of fell out of love with it. And whenever I did buy things like the Disney CMF series or Scooby-Doo particularly, I remember, I was really embarrassed to go to the shops and buy these sets because I was worried that someone could see me because like all of the bags, the big plastic white bags. You can see right through it. Like you can tell it's Lego. So I was terrified. I'd never talk about Lego. Like I would just buy it in secret and then like store it away. I didn't want anyone to see it. I didn't have anything displayed in my bedroom. It was just all in storage tubs. I just felt really embarrassed all the time. But like I still kept up. I still watched like Just Too Goods videos and I kept up with all the Lego news. Like I was there when the Brick Shows channel got deleted. I remember that. So like I've always kind of been involved with the community but I definitely kept it very down low because I didn't want people to know. These days though, I'm like, you know what? It makes me happy. I love it. It's therapeutic. It brings me so much joy. I really don't care. And that's something that hopefully you'll learn in time is that it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. But yeah, it can be very hard if people are teasing you over something that you really enjoy. It's really tough. And I wish you the best of luck. Just try not to let it get to you. Your plays asks, would I ever travel to the United States for a Lego convention like Brickworld Chicago? If you asked me this two months ago, I would say no. Now, 
yeah, I probably would. Now that I actually know that Lego conventions are a thing and that they like often happen and like what goes on in them, Honestly, I would love to go. I've been lucky enough to be able to go to the USA like quite a lot in my life. Like I'm very familiar with it. In fact, I've even convinced myself that I would be able to drive a car on the other side of the road. But yeah, I'm really interested to go to like Brick Fair, Virginia or Brickwall, Chicago. What is my favorite Harry Potter movie? Harry Potter, the prisoner of Azkaban. Hands down, I love it, it's the best. So Honeycomb had three questions for me, but the one I'm gonna answer in particular is number three. Do you like musicals? If so, favorites. Funny you ask that question because I'm a massive theatre kid. These are all of my programs, plus my massive Book of Mormon, um, how they made the musical book. I've been to one West End musical. I saw The Cursed Child on the West End. I haven't seen a Broadway show. That's on my bucket list. I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna do it very soon. And at the moment, that show would be Mean Girls. I also saw The Lion King on the West End. That was super cool. But out of all of the ones I've seen, I would have to say, hands down, the Book of Mormon's my favorite. It's hilarious. Spooky Mormon Hell Dream's definitely my favorite out of it. I do think Six the Musical though has one of the best soundtracks and I also really enjoyed Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I saw that on the West End and that blew my mind. Ryan says, you've mentioned liking makeup and fashion as well, but do you have any other hobbies aside from Lego, Harry Potter and Star Wars? Some of the ones I've been loving recently are embroidery. During quarantine slash like lockdown type thing, I went to my craft store and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna teach myself how to do embroidery. So I bought one of the hoops and I just started embroidering like while watching TV and it was so calming. So then I grabbed my dance bag and just started embroidering all these different things. I then bought some like t-shirts and like did a Pixar ball on one of them. I also did like my dog's ears. My favorite one that I've done though is Anakin's lightsaber on my dance bag. I love that one to pieces. And I'd probably say dancing as well. That's a hobby, isn't it? Yeah, that's a hobby, dancing. Django Fett wants to know how old I am. I am 20 years old. I turned 21 in October. Brookhead Studio says, I heard you are from London. Are you Australian or English? Um, technically both. As demonstrated by the tea in this Sydney mug. Yeah, I'm a mixture of both. I was born in the UK and then we moved around a lot when I was a kid. Although I am English, I consider myself more Australian these days because I've been living here for most of my life. Like that's where I grew up primarily. Riley Riley says, you mentioned in your Patronus Effect tutorial that you've also worked as a compositor. Can you tell us what you have worked on or are those projects not come out yet and are still tied up in NDA land. Luckily none of them are tied up in NDA land so I can talk about it. So basically when I finished school I went straight into working in film and television. My dad works in that industry as well so it was really easy for me to kind of like get my foot in the door and within six months of working I was working on IMAX documentaries which was really intimidating because I was so new. I hadn't gone to film school or anything like that so I had to pretty much learn everything as I went. So in total I worked on three I think in the first year and then and they've all like debuted. They're in like cinemas all around the world now. Then last year I worked on another three. I can't remember if I'm credited or not. I've definitely got my names in the credits of three films. So while doing all that work as well, I visited a lot of different post houses and one of which includes Animal Logic, which you probably haven't heard of, but you know very well as they are the ones who created the Lego movie. Hagrid wants to know how I display my Lego since my house is upside down. Um, you've got to like put this special adhesive on the bottom of everything when you stick it to a shelf. That way it doesn't fall. If you don't do that, it will smash and break. Lachlan wants to know what is the most expensive minifigure I have bought from Bricklink. Some of the minifigures can be really expensive, but there's one in particular that was my most expensive. And even then I got a really good deal on it. And that is Goofy from the Disney train. At the time of buying this, this version of the figure was the cheapest on Bricklink at 30 Australian dollars. I checked earlier and at the moment there's only one for sale in Australia and he's going for $65. So I am so glad I snatched him up when I did because he's ridiculously expensive. No wants to know have I ever wanted to move to America or anywhere else. When I was younger I was fixed on the idea that I was going to move back to the UK. I've since changed my mind. I really do like Australia but recently I've been thinking about possibly moving to like Canada or the US for like maybe a few months to a year. After that I'd probably just see what happens but yeah I'm definitely like not afraid to move overseas. I think it'll be really good to do something like that just for like a period of time. Another really hard username, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce, asks what my favorite all time set is from my childhood. That would be this little beauty right here, the 2010 Burrow. I loved the dollhouse style of this set. I would like make the living room. I had like a little Lego TV and I would just play with this so much using like Ron and Harry and putting on voices and things like that. I don't even know how to explain it. I just had so much joy 
from doing that. It was pretty much like a young girl playing with Barbies, except the Barbies are Lego minifigures and it's all based around Harry Potter. And instead of the dollhouse, it's the burrow. Some dude named KD wants to know if I could design my perfect Lego set, what would it be and what minifigures would it include? That is very simple. It is the Spooky Island Castle from the 2002 movie Scooby-Doo. And all of the minifigures would be Scooby-Doo, Daphne, Shaggy, Velma, Fred, probably like two nights. And then you'd have like the little roller coaster cart on like some small train tracks. That's my ideal set. One day I want to attempt to make it into a mock. Um, whether or not I do that is a different question. F1 Knight wants to know, do I watch Formula One or any other motorsports? I personally don't. I watch like clips and bits and pieces because my dad really loves it. But fun fact, my late grandpa used to work for McLaren. So like when I was one or two or something, my mum took me to like go and visit like their like studio office tour thing. She took me to visit basically. So I technically sat in a Formula One car. Lego Customs 22 ask who are my top three Lego YouTubers and top three non Lego YouTubers? Taking out the three obvious answers being just too good Ash and Flash and m &R Productions. We're just going to kind of push them to the side. I'm not counting them. That's too obvious. So from there, my top three in no particular order would be Cafe Con Lego, BFab, and Brickitect. In terms of three non-LEGO YouTubers, number one would be Jenna Marbles, although technically she doesn't really exist anymore, she retired. Um, I'm still really heartbroken over that. I love Makara Tewers, Tewers, Makara. Makara, Makara. I don't know how to pronounce her name, but basically she's a very funny YouTuber who makes like a bunch of sewing videos. Like I suck at sewing. I don't particularly want to do it all that often, but like I love watching her content. It's hilarious. Another one I love is Mike's Mike. He's an Australian YouTuber who like often talks about like reality TV and like pop culture and things like that, but he's also really into science and puts out some really creative and unique videos. And then lastly, we have Drew Gooden and Danny Gonzalez because they are the same person. So I've been rambling on for an hour now. Basically, that is the entire Q&A and all the questions I selected. Thank you so much to everyone who wanted to ask me a question. I do want to continue to do more of these and like make it a series. I don't know how often I'll be doing it, but I hope you enjoyed this Potter Minifig Pals pajama party. And if you have a question that you'd like me to answer in the next episode, please leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. My hair is super greasy. I really need to go and wash it. Until next time, I'll see you later.